بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to our study of al aqida al tahawiya and we reached a portion of the treaties where Imam al tahawi is talking about taslim li nusus or being uh, satisfied and content uh, with the divine text and this is actually a mas'ala min masail azima. Uh, this is one of the great masail, one of the great uh, issues from amongst the many great issues that make up the pre uh, the precepts of uh, of the usul of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. They make up the foundation principles of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah. So in this lesson, we will cover this concept and this. Uh, construct, if you will, about the importance of accepting the nasus and what Imam al tahawi mentions in regards to this, because this is where we find many of the innovative groups uh, go astray, because it is not sh that they're not illustrating that they are accepting the divine text by distorting their meaning in order to fit their intellect, to make their intellectual uh, s satisfied in order to please their own aql, but rather the intellect <clears throat> that is salim and healthy is governed by the book and the sunnah. But that takes striving, that takes iman billah, wa iman bi rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So this is very, very important, it's a very important concept that Imam al tahawi is mentioning here. He begins the text, he says, <clears throat> one's Islam is not secure unless it is based on acceptance and submission. Acceptance, qabul, wa taslim, or inqiyad. So here, <clears throat> Imam al tahawi is mentioned in this very important part, which is, as we said before, a precept of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah, because this forms a foundation that if you do not believe in this foundation, then the, then many of the other principles and even the nasus will be challenged by your own intellect because you haven't accepted the book and the sunnah. <clears throat> what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in Kitab al-Kareem? When he, in, in Surah Al-Baqarah, Qala subhana, Alif Lam Dhalika al-Kitab la rayba fi. Hudin lil muttaqeen, alladheena yu'minoon bil ghaybi wa yuqimoon as-salat wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-kareem, after alif lam mim, thalika al-kitab al rayba fi. This is a book that, came to, that contains no doubt. Hudin lil muttaqeen, it's a guidance for those who are pious. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes who this muttaqeen are. Who are these pious people Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is talking about? What are their sifat? What are their characteristics? Alladheena yu'minoon bil ghayb. Those who believe in the ghayb, the unseen. Wa yuqimoon as-salat wa mimma razaqanahum yunfiqoon. And they establish the prayer. And they pay from... Wa yu'minoon bil... They... They pay the zakat or they they spend out of that which we have provided for them. Those are the sifat of the mu'mineen. Those are the sifat of the muttaqeen. So those are the believers. Those are the pious believers. What is the relevance of mentioning this ayah here? Ahabat the relevance is that here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains that the muttaqeen, the pious ones, that they believe in the ghayb. Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghayb. What do they believe in? They believe in the unseen. That means you've never, you and I, have, we've never seen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we believe in him. We've never seen the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We never seen the Prophet Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. We never say Musa. We never see Adam alayhim after salatu wasalam. But we believe in them. We believe in them because they are mentioned in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the authentic ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasalam. 
So the relevance here, Habit as Imam al Tahawi said, he says, one Islam is not secure unless it is based on acceptance. So unless it is based upon acceptance. And and in the Arabic text, Imam al Tahawi, he says, Wala Tathbut. Wala Tathbut Qadam al Islam. Illa ala zahir tislim wal istislam. So he says, one's Islam. I I prefer to say one is one's Islam is not affirmed. So therefore, if you don't accept that, how can you even be from the believers? Well, I tuthbit. It's not affirmed. So your Islam cannot be affirmed if you don't believe in the kitab wala sunnah. If you don't believe in the ghayb, because the ghayb is mentioned in kitab wa sunnah. So it's very important to habit billah, this principle, because this is a this is a qaida. This right here is a, a principle, an established principle. And as we mentioned in our study of mujmul uh, ittiqad or aqidah, that this is a precept of ahlul sunnati wal jama'ah. This is a foundation principle. Meaning your religion is built on that. Because if you don't believe in the Quran, or you have doubt about the Quran, or you have doubt about the Sunnah, what Islam do you have? Everything is based on the book and the Sunnah. That's your foundation. So you have to have taslim for your Islam to be intact. It's Islam, submission, complete submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And submission to the Nasuls, because the Nasuls are the are our revelation. They're Wahi. And there are so many Nasuls in the Quran and the Sunnah to, to illustrate. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says we kitab al-Kareem, wa'atiullah wa rasul. Obey Allah and obey his messenger. Obeying Allah is what? Obeying his book. Obeying the messenger is what? Is obeying the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa and practicing it. So Imam uh Fozan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he says about this this ibarah, this this uh, sentence, this statement of Imam al Tahawis, he said, This is why when the Prophet asked his companions about things they did not know, they would say, Allah and his messenger know best. Allah wa Rasulu Alam. They did not delve into conjecture and speculation to infer, make inferences. Therefore, if you find a reliable person with knowledge to explain something unclear to you, then that is good. Otherwise, continue to accept it and believe that it is true and that it does have a meaning, but that meaning is not clear to you. That's very important. Imam Fozan, Hafidh Allah Ta'ala, is explaining how we should deal with these nusuls. When you don't understand, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, فَسَلْ أَهْلِي ذِكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask the people of knowledge if you don't know. So it's very, very important for us to understand that and to take that on board, to take that to heart. Because that is understanding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and those things which we don't understand, we ask Ahlul Ilm for clarity. And what is absolutely imperative, because this keeps your Islam. How many people have we seen who have left Islam? I'm amazed daily, unfortunately, coming across, especially through social media, people who I knew before who are a zahir, pious, righteous sisters, mutahajibat, niqab, everything, striving in America. Some of them are have all over their social media now, pagans, in witches, in witchcraft. This is their interest now. And and literally offering their bodies now. What happened? What happened? Something of Shubahat. The doubts and their Adama Taslim. They didn't have, they didn't secure their hearts. They weren't secure with the Nasus. And they didn't feed their souls with iman through practice and through ilm. And so it's very important, Habitat that we know and understand this. 
and accept this and benefit from Ahlul Ilm, from the people of knowledge. Then Imam al Tahawi, he mentions, he says, one Islam is not secure unless it is based on acceptance. And in the next uh, Ibadi, he says, he who seeks the knowledge of what is beyond his capacity to know and whose intellect is not content with surrender, with that taslim, his search will veil him from true faith in Allah's oneness, Tawheed, from clear knowledge and from correct faith. Imam Fulzan comments about this, he says, in regards to asserting faith in things that are impossible to know. Again, that's going back to the ayat. Alif Lam Mim, Thalik Al Kitab Al Araiba Fi, Hudin Lil Muttaqeen, Al Ladina Yuk Minuna Bil Ghaib. Al Ladina Yuk Minuna Bil Ghaib. What do they do? They believe in the Ghaib. They believe in the unseen. Things that may, may not, and more than likely will not, always agree with your intellect. That's just the reality. You're a human being. You have a different culture. You have a different society. You were raised with certain things. Because your intellect, you're bombarded with so many things. And this is a moral ghaybiya. This is things of the unseen. Things that are out of the ordinary, some of these things. Or many things. But the muttaqeen are the ones who believe in that ghayb. They believe in that. And that is true faith, as Imam Matahawi mentions. Uh, had the tawheed. Had the tawheed. From clear knowledge and from correct faith. Iman. Uh, Imam Fulzan, he mentions, he says, in regards to asserting faith in things that are impossible to know, such as the nature, the kafiya, we mentioned that when we talk about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's attributes. It is obligatory to believe in these things and refer knowledge of them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and those who have believed know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say, what did Allah intend by this example? SubhanAllah. That's also Surah Al-Baqarah. Inna Allah la... What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Inna Allah la yastahiyyan yadraba mithalin ma ba'udatin fa ma fawkaha wa amma alladheena amanu fa ya'lamuna annahu al-haqqun min rabbihim wa amma alladheena kafaru fa yuquluna maadha aradu Allahu bihaadha mithala yudillu bihi kathiran wa yahdi bihi kathira wa ma yudillu bihi illa al-fasiqeen Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us know that the fasiqeen, they're misguided from that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes this mithalin and those who are weak in their hearts and those who disbelieve, they only become more confused. We're not saying that you're going to know every aspect of tafsir. That's not what we're saying. And that there's not going to be things you're going to need to know. You're going to need to go to the, uh, to the tafsir. Wa ahl al -ilm. However, again, look at the difference between ahl iman wa ahl kufr. Ahli Iman, they believe in those texts. Going back to the other ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah, that they, alladhina yu'minuna bil ghayb, they believe in the ghayb. Have an Ahli Iman. They believe in the ghayb. They believe in the unseen. And they don't challenge the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They don't make imtihan al-mushaf. Allah Taala says, It is he who was sent uh, down to you, the book. In it are verses that are clear. They are the foundation of the book. And others are not entirely clear. Meaning they're ambiguous. As for those whose heart is deviation, they will follow that of which is not entirely clear. Seeking discord and seeking an interpretation suitable to them. And no one knows its interpretation. Illa Allah, except Allah. So Allah Tabaraka Ta'ala says, Huwa alladhi anzala alayka al-kitaba minhu ayatun muhkamatu hunnum al-kitab ukhra mutashabihad fa'amma alladhina fi qulubihim zaygun fi yattabi'una ma tashabaha minhu ibtigal fitnati wa ibtigal ta'wili wa ma ya'lamu ta'wiluhu illallah wa rasikhuna fi al-ilmi yuquluna aminna bih 
كل من عند ربنا وما يذكر إلا أول الألباب الله سبحانه وتعالى here أحب تبي الله he lets us know that he تبارك وتعالى revealed the book كتاب الله and in it are verses that are محكم and verses that are متشابه or the متشابهات meaning that there are verses that are clear clear in their meaning so the scholars they have some uh uh different interpretation a bit about the what ref, what is the muhkam and what is mutashabihat what what does this mean as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in there women who ayati muhkamati hunnu mul kitab wa khurum mutashabihat so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that some of the verses are very clear so one of the things we understand from the different uh Tafsir of the ulama, if you will, that these, uh, the, those uh, muhkam, those verses which are, 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 they form a foundation. They're very clear. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to Kitab al Kirim, Waqimu Salah. Establish the prayer. For most Muslims, if not all Muslims, we can safely say, unless they just entered Islam, more than likely, they understand that very clearly. Waqimu Salat, no one's going to say, oh, that means give charity. Oh, Aqimu Salat, that just means make dua. No, because people spend time, then energy and efforts learning what's learning about Salat and Tahara and the, those things which are, uh, for example, Fiqh Ibadat. It's very clear. It's unambiguous. However, there are verses, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions, there are verses that are... Uh, Ambiguous, if you will, that they are more open to interpretation. There's perhaps it could be understood that there's a variety of meanings. And Allah Ta'ala revealed them out of his divine hikmah. Well, have him in Iman Billah. This is from the Iman of the Mu'min in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To know that nothing, there's no batil in his book. Accepting that, affirming that, establishing that in your life. You have to. That helps to repel batil and, and shaitaniyah and the shubahat of the shaitan and the shayateen men amongst, from amongst mankind and jinn as being affirmed, resting affirmed on that. And he says, subhanahu wa ta'ala, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا فَيَعْلَمُوا uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and as for those whose hearts is def, deviate, deviated, فَأَمَّا فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَأْتَبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَا مِنْ As for those whose heart has deviance, وَعِيَاذًا بِاللَّهِ وَعِيَاكُمْ مِنْ Misguidance. They follow the mutashabiyya. Why? Because then it's open for interp interpretation and they can try to twist the meanings, make ta'wil fasid. The scholars of Ahl sunnah also say, as a, a, a further point I want to mention, is that the verses of Sifat are actually muhkam. Ahl bid'ah, they say la, they're mutashabiyat. So that way they can play with that wheel in various interpretations. So it's very important for us to know and understand. We view that as muhkam. Khalas, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said he rose above his throne. We accept that. We say he rose above his throne in a manner that suits his majesty. We don't need to add, detract, distort, negate. La, abidin. We don't need to say, no, it means his power. No, it means his stola. It means he took the throne by force. No, it means this. No, it means that. No. Ahl sunnah they taslim bin nasus. And that goes back to the ethar we mentioned, the ethar of Imam Malik, rahmatin wasia, in which he said, which means, when he was asked, Ya Ababidila, Kaiba Stoa. Someone asked him in the Dars, O oh, Abu Abdullah, how did he ascend? Meaning, how did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ascend? How? Cave? You know, what was the what it, how does it look? How 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 does he do that? Imam Malik became upset with this. And he said, Al Istoa Ma'lun. Wa kayf al majhu or kayf majhu wa sual anhu bida. He said, Istawa, <clears throat> the ascension is 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 known. It's ma'lum in Arabic. We know this. We know what it means in Arabic. Irtifa. 
is one of the meanings for uh, istoa in Arabic, to re rise. We know the meaning. But the how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does it, how the majhul, we don't know that. And we don't even have to go into that. Again, going back to some of the previous lessons, we mentioned that the Salaf, they, they had the Teslim for Yunusul, so they didn't need to go back. They didn't question that. As we mentioned in the first ibadah that Imam Fuzan was explaining how the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وجمعين, when they didn't understand something, what did they say? Allah wa Rasulu alam. Allah and his messenger know best. They didn't speculate. They didn't distort. They didn't negate. They didn't in reinterpret. They didn't, uh, uh, you know, re to speculate. Especially after the, the Nas, after the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made it clear for them. And those things which we have no other nusus, we understand that the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala and Majma'in, their menhaj, their methodology was taslim li nusus. They just accepted. They didn't, they didn't have to ask these kind of questions. Kava istoa. How did he ascend? So they accepted the nusus. They did not uh, distort. So this is very important for us to understand. And this really has a direct relationship, not just with the sifat, but likewise with uh, with Aqidah in general. Or I should say Islam in general, because this is a precept of Ahl Sunnah in that Taslim bin Nusus, accepting the Nus, the nus. and accepting it in its asl and its origin, we say that it's in uh, a Vahir. You know, it's the apparent meaning. Unless illa and tati Nusus Ukhra, unless there's other Nusus which show that it's not. Uh, apparent in its meaning, but rather it is, uh, uh, if you will, majazi or um, figurative or something like this, or it has another meaning that has been explained in the in the book in the Sunnah, in the book or in the Sunnah. So very important that we know and we have, uh, uh, we we understand these things, these these principles on how to ta'amal نتعمل بالنصوص. How do we, uh, how do we operate with the text? How do we engage with the Quran and the Sunnah? This is why you have people now that are du'at, that are now causing doubt in the Quran and saying strange, gharib things. These are people who studied years. I'm talking like 15, 20 years. And then that's the nahay. Where, where do they end up going? To be, to, you go all the way there, that whole journey, and then all of a sudden you, you don't, you're not sure about the Quran? You're not sure about the Qira'at? You got to open those doors up for the youth as if they don't have many things to distort them and cause them to leave Islam? You you need to add something else to the mix? Wallah musta'an. Then the imam he mentions here about this the ibadah we're explaining that knowledge uh, beyond the capacity that you, you give it to Ahl al-Ilm and then likewise you also surrender to the Nasus. He says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has kept some knowledge hidden from created being so do not tire yourself. Don't ask about things that la There's no benefit in knowing and investigating certain issues. For example, the cave. <coughs> if we look at the Nasus and we're going to sit, what do you need to know the kafiyah? You don't need to know. You just need to know and believe. You need to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that way you can worship Him properly. You, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the knowledge which is kifaya. Wa Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That which is sufficient for us. We don't need to speculate. We don't need to go beyond that as far as our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's complete. This day I, I, I completed my religion for you and, and completed my favor. I've perfected my religion for you and completed my favor upon you. SubhanAllah. It's complete. So we don't need to speculate. We don't need to go beyond. We have the knowledge that we need to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and get to paradise and fulfill the divine obligation what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem. وَمَا خَلَقْتُوا الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنْتَ لَلِي عَبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So we have what is sufficient for us to, to get to paradise. هَذَا عِلْمْ مَوْجُودْ وَمَعْلُونَ That knowledge is with us and it is known Allah Tabarak Ta'ala says in Kitab al -Kirin, and this is about those who are firm in knowledge, we believe in it, 
all of it from our Lord and no one will be reminded except those of understanding. SubhanAllah. That is the statement of the mu'mineen. And that is the statement of the, the, the ahl al-ilm from the mu'mineen. We believe in it. All of it is from our Lord. And no one will be reminded except those of understanding. So, Ahl Sunnah, the way they deal with the Nasus, they submit and accept it. And this is what Imam al Tahawi was saying and referring to in the, in the past two Ibarat that we mentioned. And so, Ahl Sunnah, they submit and they accept. Even if they don't know the kafia, they don't know the how, and they keep iman with regards to it. And especially those things, when it refers to the ambiguous ayat of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, this is another part of the methodology of Ahl Sunnah. Very important. Imam Fuzan articulates this very well. That this, this is a part of one of the precepts of Ahl Sunnah, of the way we understand the Quran and the nasus, how we we deal with the text and how we deal with interpretation interpretation of the text. So Imam Fulzan will read his whole ibadah. He says, they submit and accept, meaning Ahl Sunnah. And the fact that they do not know what it means does not keep them from having faith in it and accepting it. Or it could mean that they refer the ambiguous parts. This is minhajia, methodology. The ambiguous parts, which is the mutashabihat. Uh, of the book of Allah back to the clear, unambiguous part, those muhkam, those verses that are muhkam, for the interpretation of them and to get a clear meaning of them. And they say, all of it is from our Lord. That's that's the uh, part of the usul of Ahl al-ilm. Is they look at those verses, which may not be clear. Maybe not, they're not clear to you in your understanding. Maybe they're, they're not as... Uh, uh, as other verses, you know, as far as clarity and, and no, no doubt about its meaning. And what does Ahl Sunnah do as a, as a minhaj and how do the ulama Sunnah deal with this? Is they take those verses, they use the Quran to explain the Quran as a part of their tafsir. Those things which are clear, they understand those things which are ambiguous in light of those things which are clear. That is a very important part of interpretation. And that is an important asl min asula ahl sunnah. Then Imam at tahawi he also further expounds upon what he was just saying. He says he will find himself, meaning those people who are confused uh, about the text, the divine text. He says, he will find himself wavering between disbelief and faith, belief in denial, acceptance and rejection. very, very important. This shows us the danger of not having that to sleep with the Nasus. And that's why it's going back to what Imam al Tahawi was saying prior. That having that that uh, that surety, that acceptance, kabul, and to keep you from being distracted and wavering between kufr and iman. How many people are so confused about their religion? Especially, we find a lot of the youth in this day and age so confused, asking questions we could have never thought about. Even us as new Muslims, we didn't really, I don't recall going through some of those things that now, maybe they're bombarded with so much more. And I just believe in general, the youth in general are more fickle than what we see in a lot of our societies. A lot more mental illness, a lot more issues going on. And so with that being the case, 
it's very easy for people to get distracted and knocked off the path. And a person finding themselves confused. That's why you have to affirm those things. Even when you don't have much knowledge, but learn these precepts of Ahlul Sunnah, Taslim. It's the text. Knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the truth is obscured from those who do not submit to Allah. Very important here, this statement. Very clear. Knowledge of Allah and the truth is obscured. It becomes uh, confusing. It becomes mixed from those who do not submit to Allah. When you submit to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you submit to the Nasus, you say the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you accept whatever's in it. The sunnah that's authenticated is the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Oh, this doesn't make sense to me. This doesn't make sense. That's because of your naqs. That's because of your shortcomings. And it requires explanation. It requires looking more into it if it is something which is necessary to look more into. But there are many things which might not jive with our intellect because there are issues of dealing with the Amur Ghaibiya, things the world the world of the unseen. Or they're dealing with things it could be miracles and 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 things that are lies away jail. Bless his righteous servants with. And stories that don't make sense to us. But there are many lessons to be learned from it. If you submit to the Nasus. If you don't want to submit, well, yeah, you can debate and you can argue and then you leave Islam. Become a disbeliever. This is the, the way of many of the, the zanadiqa. And that's why you're always asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for ikhlas with the man. Oh, Allah, please. Affirm. Make our hearts firm on iman. رَبَّنَا لَا تَزَقْ قُلُوبَنَا بَعْدَ ذَا دَيْتَنَا وَحَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَدُونْكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ وَحَابْ O our Lord, رَبَّنَا رَبَّنَا لَا تَزَقْ قُلُوبَنَا O our Lord, please don't allow our hearts to deviate after you have guided us. So always asking for hidayah and the understanding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and taslim that you have acceptance and qubul in your heart for the text from what comes from the book of Allah and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the condition of the hypocrites is that they are the ones who waver in faith. They hear a text, it doesn't go with their intellect, they're on the verge of kufr. They hear this, they hear that, oh, they feel better now. They're in kufr. This day, that day. You know, it's like ping pong until they just ping their pong out of the religion. Wa'iyadun billah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem about those, those hypocrites and those, you know, who are like this. He says, every time it lights the way for them, they walk therein. Oh, there's light. But when darkness comes over them, they stand still. So, and Imam Fuzan explains, he says, those who have faith, who have Iman on the other hand, in contrast, they talk about what they know. They speak about the knowledge that they have knowledge about. And what they do not know, they entrust the knowledge of it to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they do not take it upon themselves to do something they do not know or say something about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that they do not know. To speak about Allah azza wa jal without ilm is equal to idolatry. Nay, it is even greater than it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi kitab al -kareem, say, My Lord has only forbidden immoralities, what is apparent of them and what is concealed, and sin and oppression without right. And that you associate with the law that for which he has not sent down authority. And that you say about a law that which you do not know. Very important, habit of Allah, that we speak about, speak with ilm about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our many shortcomings and the mistakes that we make. Because sometimes in excitement, sometimes we make mistakes because we're frail, we're weak. But those who deliberately, out of obstinance and arrogance, who assert things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, no, this is halal for sure. This is haram for sure because I say so. Then they're in a, a great danger. They're in a path of great danger, as Imam Fuzan mentioned. And until our next lesson, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We ask Allah wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to accept our good and forgive our evil and protect us from kulli su wa makru. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad. وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم